So in this video, we are going to learn a very important shortcut which will be useful in solving a lot of problems and limits very easily. So in there are two statements. The first statement is in evaluation of limit x tends to 0 some polynomial p of x by some polynomial q of x. So you have some polynomial by some polynomial and limit x is tending to 0. So in the evaluation of limit x tends to 0 p of x by q of x only the terms corresponding to least power of x in p of x and q of x matters. So in p of x and q of x only the least power of x the term corresponding to least power of x matters. So you can neglect all the other powers and you just need to consider the least powers and find the limit. So let us see what it means in an example. Similarly, when x is tending to infinity, we have p of x by q of x. Only the highest power of x matters. When x is tending to 0, only the least power of x matters. When x is tending to infinity, only the highest power of x matters. So this is a very important statement which you need to keep in mind. Now let us try to see how to use this uh, statement to our advantage by selecting few examples. For example, if you are asked to find this limit. So limit x tends to 0, 2x cube minus 3x square plus 4x by x square minus 2x plus 1. So if you want to quickly find this limit. So it is of the form limit x tends to 0 some polynomial by some polynomial. So what does our statement say? So when x is tending to 0 only the least power matters. So within the numerator what is the least power of x? This right. So you can neglect these two in the numerator and in the denominator what is the least power of x? So x square, x power 1, x power 0. So this is the least power of x and compared to this these two elements can be neglected. So this limit is exactly same as limit x tends to 0, 4x by 1. I can neglect all the remaining terms. So that is equal to as x tends to 0, 4x tends to 0. So the answer to this is 0. Next, so limit x tends to infinity, you have a polynomial by polynomial. So to quickly find this limit, so what you just need to do is, in the numerator, take only the highest power of x, neglect all the remaining, so I will neglect all the remaining. In the denominator also, take the highest power of x and neglect the remaining. So you are getting x cube by 2x cube. So this limit is same as limit x tends to infinity, x cube by 2x cube. x cube and x cube are getting cancelled. The answer is 1 by 2. Similarly, again limit x tends to infinity polynomial by polynomial. So only the highest power matters. So in the numerator the highest power is x cube. In the denominator the highest power is x square. So that is equal to limit x tends to infinity 2x cube by x square. So limit x tends to 0, 2x, which is equal to infinity. So using this concept, you can very quickly get the limits of the form limit x tends to 0 polynomial by polynomial or limit x tends to infinity polynomial by polynomial. So a major use of this statements come in problems which deal with expansions. So let us take a few examples where the questions based on expansions can be solved very easily using this two statements. So before going into further examples, so let us look at slight, slightly important concept here. So limit x tends to infinity a0 x power m plus a1 x power m minus 1 plus a2 x power m minus 2 so on up to am by b0 x power n plus b1 x power n minus 1 plus b2 x power n minus 2 plus so on up to bn. So limit x tends to infinity you have a polynomial of x by polynomial of x. So we have already seen that 
when limit extends to infinity only the highest power matters so this will be equal to so as you can see the highest power of x in the numerator is m the highest power of x in the denominator is n so with respect to with relation to these two terms all the other terms can be neglected so this will be equal to limit extends to infinity a naught by b naught x power m minus n so what will the value of this limit be equal to it will be equal to a naught by b naught if m is equal to n if the highest power of x in the numerator is same as the highest power of x in the denominator then the answer will be just the ratio of the coefficients so next so this will be equal to 0 if m is less than n because if m is less than n the power will be negative so this becomes 1 by infinity 1 by infinity which makes this limit as 0 that is if the power in the denominator is more than the power in the numerator the highest power in the denominator is more than the highest power in the numerator then the value of this limit will be equal to 0 and this will be equal to infinity plus or minus infinity if m is greater than m. If the highest power in the numerator is more than that in the denominator so if the answer will be either plus infinity or minus infinity depending on the values of a naught and b naught so as you can see if m is greater than n this term goes to infinity and if a naught by b naught is positive this limit goes to plus infinity if a naught by b naught is negative this limit goes to minus infinity so when the limit extends to infinity the value of the limit depends on the relative power relative highest powers in the numerators and denominators so the same thing can be observed with respect to limit x tends to 0 px by qx so when you look at limit x tends to 0 the concept is that only the least power of x matters so you need to understand you need to find the least power of x in the numerator the least power of x in the denominator so if these two are same if the least power of x in the numerator is same as the least power of x in the denominator then the answer will be just the ratio of coefficients ratio of coefficients so if the least power of x in the numerator so least power of x in the numerator equal to least power of x in the denominator then the answer is ratio of coefficients a finite number ratio of coefficients a finite non-zero number if the least power of x in the numerator is greater than least power of x in the denominator least power of x in the numerator if it is greater than least power of x in the denominator then the answer will be equal to 0 for example if the least power of x in the numerator is x square the least power of x in the denominator is x so as you can see an x remains in the numerator but as x tends to 0 the whole limit goes to 0 and similarly lastly if least power of x in the numerator is less than least power of x in the denominator you get 1 by 0 as the answer hence the answer will be either plus or minus infinity it is the limit is not finitely different so if limit x tends to 0 polynomial by polynomial has to be finitely different then the least power of x in the numerator has to be greater than or equal to the least power of x in the denominator so if this limit has to be a non-zero finite number then the least power of x in the numerator has to be equal to the least power of x in the denominator so this concept will be very much useful when you deal with logical questions based on expansions so let us look at some of the examples where these concepts will be useful 
So this is a very standard question model where which can be asked in your JE mains. So if limit x tends to 0, 4 plus sin 2x plus a sin x plus b cos x by x square exists, then find the values of a and b. So what is this question based on? So as you can see, limit x tends to 0, so the denominator is x square and in the numerator you have sin 2x, sin x and cos x. So we know that all these three functions can be expanded as an increasing powers of x, a polynomial with increasing powers of x. Now in the denominator you have x square, that is the least power of x in the denominator is x square. The least power of x in the denominator is x square. Hence, if this limit has to finitely exist, the least power of x in the numerator has to be greater than or equal to 2. That's what we have seen in the previous derivation. So, if this limit has to be finitely defined, then the least power of x in the numerator has to be greater than or equal to least power of x in the denominator. If both are exactly equal then you have a non-zero limit. If the least power in the numerator is greater than the least power in the denominator then the value of limit is equal to zero. And if the least power of x in the numerator is less than the least power of x in the denominator then the limit does not exist. So it is given that the limit exists. That means the least power of x in the numerator has to be greater than or equal to 2. That is, no element should have a power which is less than 2, that is 1 or 0. So, let us do the expansion. 4 plus, so what is the expansion of sin 2x? 2x minus 2x whole cube by 3 factorial plus minus so on. I do not need all the, I do not need to write all the powers. I am looking at this 2 plus a times sin x is x minus x cubed by 3 factorial plus minus so on plus b times cos x. Cos x is 1 minus x square by 2 factorial plus x power 4 by 4 factorial so on. So now as you can see, I will just separate the various terms. So I will separate first the constant terms. The constant term is 4 here, there is no constant term here, there is no constant term here, have a b here. So 4 plus b is the constant term plus x times, what is the x term? You have a 2 here, you have an a here, this is ax, 2x and you do not have an x term here plus x square times, so what is the coefficient of x square? we have minus b by 2 factorial, which is the x square term, plus so on by x square. So what is the least power of x in the denominator? It is 2. What is the least power of x in the numerator? It is the constant term. So if this constant term is not equal to 0, this limit will not be defined. Because for this limit to be finitely defined, the least power of x in the numerator has to be greater than or equal to least power of x in the denominator. That is, the least power of x in the numerator has to be greater than or equal to 2. That means, this term and this term should not exist. That means that the coefficients have to be equal to 0. So, 4 plus b has to be equal to 0 and 2 plus a should also be equal to 0. This means b has to be equal to minus 4 and a has to be equal to minus 2. a has to be equal to minus 2. So, if these two values are given to a and b, these two terms will be equal to zeros. Now, the least powers in the numerator and denominator are same. Hence, the value of the limit is equal to minus b by 2. It is minus of minus 4 by 2 which is equal to 2. Hence, the value of this limit 
is equal to 2. So that is the answer.